Welcome. I've been willing to step aside and visit with you about this. Um, I'm a little obviously concerned. I have seen it. Obviously, very concerned about uh, an accusation of that nature. Yeah. Can be an incredibly devastating thing. I would like it to be taken care of, but not in a sacrament meeting. Well, it hasn't been taken care of so far. Uh, and so I just want people to know. You know, that's my intent coming here today. Children should not be around him. He shouldn't be taking the sacrament. And I feel very strongly about that. It's my intentions for coming. And I hope that you'll take it to heart that attending church in good standing. And he certainly shouldn't be allowed around children. I, I will. I will speak with him. I will talk with my state president. I'll do everything that I'm instructed to do in this case. Um, who is your bishop? I don't attend church anymore. Um, so you said that this hasn't been taken care of? You I filed a lawsuit. It was dismissed because they said it happened too long ago. And there's a deposition with him. You know, I thought at least when I filed suit, and he was dragged in for a deposition that maybe he would apologize and maybe try to explain his actions, but all he did was continue to lie. You know, it was reported to the principal at the time at Orem Junior High, and they threatened me and told me that I misinterpreted his actions, that I would be responsible for his wife and kids going hungry, and this turned my life upside down. And it's been a devastating situation almost my entire life. Uh, so it's time that people start paying attention to this stuff. So what is the uh, status of the, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right word. Of the my lawsuit? Yes. So it was dismissed in 2008. They've changed the statute of limitations. Terry Mitchell has a case that's pending right now at the Supreme Court. And if her case is successful, then I can refile. But at this point, it's in, in a standby. So she's the one. I mean, there was a similar in, in Sacrament meeting. No, that's McKenna Denson. Okay. And McKenna Denson's case is pending as well. And the other one is Terry? Terry Mitchell. Okay. Can you tell me your name again? Roger. R-O-G. E-R. Okay. Stevenson. And you can Google. And you will see my lawsuit filed against Jerry. Is it E-N or O-N? O-N. OK. What would be, I mean, obviously, can, can I just get you to articulate? What is your goal for today? What? My goal today was to get the word out, because he's obviously still sitting in a congregation with plenty of access to children. And if you don't think, in fact, just last summer, he directed a production of Guys and Dolls in, in Lehigh, and that's a huge cast of children. So if you don't think he's still doing what he did to me, you're sadly mistaken. Are you aware of others that have accusations against Jerry specifically? I am, but they won't, they're not brave enough to come forward. Some of them have family and children, and yeah, yes, I am. And I'm hoping, because this story will be pushed out by the same people that pushed McKenna's story, and I'm hoping maybe there will be some people come forward that would be willing to go public. So, so do you have video of this taken in our sacrament meeting today? No. Okay. Well, uh, obviously my heart is sinking low, and I'm at, I'm at you're probably at a loss for words. I'm an inexperienced person uh -huh. with such a thing. I, so. And I've been at a loss of words for a long time, and I think that it's time for me to stop being in a place of loss for words, and it's time for me to speak up for other victims, too, because there are a lot of people out there that have had things like this happen to them who I know don't have the gumption to come forward. And I would hope that if enough of us keep coming forward, that people will get that courage because that's the only way we're going to stop the cycle. Junior high, you said. Yep. 
1983. He was the drama teacher, and the year that I transferred to high school, they transferred him there as well. So I had three years of dealing with him and the torture, really, that he put me through after I tried to speak up. It, it, it was devastating for me. It, like I said, it turned my life upside down. I was on my way to scholarships. I would have attended BYU and had scholarships, and I just quit going to class at that time. My com just made me do a 360 in my life. Such a thing is such a thing is the most damaging thing that can happen to a young person. And there is no place like in a second sport. To your knowledge, there has been no. Church Disciplinary Council. Uh, you know, when he was, when he was depositioned, I th seems to me like he told my attorney that he had talked to his bishop, but I highly doubt that. I don't believe that. Okay. And if if he did, it wasn't handled. I'm going to share with you my business card. Willing to share your contact information with me, that would be great. That's all right for now. I'm just giving you my business card because it has my name on it. So I work at BYU. Yeah, but in fact, I'm friends with. Do you know who Christy Johnson is? You know, we're all starting to we're all starting to assimilate now because we've all been silenced for so long. Do you know who Christy Johnson is? She was uh, molested by her dad, who is in the history books there. At Brigham Young, and she was raped multiple times in his office at BYU. And as far as I know, I don't know if the, I believe the church actually is supplying his attorneys right now. And she's been fighting him tooth and nail. So, yeah. Sad. It's very sad. I'm sorry for all the pain that this has caused you, and uh, I appreciate your desire to try and make things better. Um, you articulated it well that your goal is to protect others. And yeah, I just think people should know. I mean, if, if I were sitting in that congregation, I want, I'd want Jesus amongst that congregation, especially if I have children, you know. If I had any children, I'd want to know. I'd watch them just a little closer, and I'd watch him just a little bit closer, you know. That's what I have to say. That's all I have to say, and that's all I came to say. At this stage, is barely getting himself up and down out of his chair in the church. I mean, he's a, he's a very sickly and elderly man, but that doesn't change his responsibility yeah. for that. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, last summer he just directed a show, so he's still able to get around as far as I know. Has that only just been the last few months? I went to, he directed a show here in the Sierra Show. I went and watched the show. And uh, I mean, he's in it, but he's sort of, I don't know. He's, he's just feeble. Yeah, well, like I said, I've heard that one before too. And the guy was 89 and he was still lifting kids up on his lap, so. I wouldn't, I'm just saying. If he has access, I would say he'd sure give it a shot. So, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your willingness to listen to me, and I'm going to leave peacefully and quietly. Okay? Yep. papers. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to actually go get a um, copy of his signed confession I'd like to give you. Okay. Okay. Good discussion? Hmm? Is that a good discussion? Yep. Thanks. <clears throat> Would you have got that? Yeah, the whole thing.